the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. These are the kinds of things that happen when God is at work in a place. And God is at work in your island, truly. Before we pray, I want to challenge us. The message tonight is truly for the body of Christ. First, in the entire body island, and then by extension, the body of Christ, as far as the message gets. The only favor I will ask of you tonight is please make sure that you get this message you're about to hear to as many people who you know who love Jesus Christ across this island. I had the honor and the privilege of having a bit of a visitation to some of your historic sites. And it was amazing to relieve history, the things that we were told to now see it come to pass. Men and women who gave themselves for the gospel, men and women who denied themselves so that Jesus would be lifted. Hallelujah. Now we are gathered tonight to hear the word of the Lord, but also as extensions of this legacy. And we must not let the gospel fail in our time. In the name of Jesus. Are you ready for tonight? Father, give me an encounter. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please lift your voice and pray. Give me an encounter. Jesus be glorified. 
Amen and Amen. God bless you again. Please be seated. Let me honor every servant of God here, the men of God who pastor and lead this church. Thank you, sirs. The pastors, servants of God, men and women of God, veterans of the gospel across this entire land. We bless you. We honor you. We recognize what you are doing for the kingdom and we do not trivialize your sacrifices. Amen. I have a calling and I have been sent primarily to the body of Christ. My assignment is to see to it that within the limit of the grace of God committed unto me that I'm able to supply the dimensions of grace and spiritual illumination that territories would require as far as loving Jesus, living for him, birthing revivals, transforming territories, and so every time God gives me the privilege and the honor of traveling around, whether in this nation, across the African continent, or around the world, it remains my singular honor to see him and I avail myself to be used by God in whatever capacity He would want to plant a fire that will burn and would unleave even those who came for that meeting. And when He grants me the unique honor of now visiting, ter visiting territories, not just churches or ministries, I take it as a bigger assignment because then I have the privilege of speaking to the entire body of Christ within that region. And I take it as a lifetime opportunity. Tonight is one of such times. In fact, the entire conference has been a moment in history. And I pray that it will not be forgotten in a hurry. In the name of Jesus. I have learned 
from men and women who have been used by God to fund the flames of revival across this nation, across Africa, and across the globe. In every generation, and every once in a while through history, you will find out that individuals and territories will experience a massive move of the Spirit. There will be such times, we call them awakenings, when certain individuals from a territory would seem to be handpicked by God. And God would move mightily and unusually through their lifetime. In Nigeria, we have all kinds of people beginning from the fathers and patriarchs of faith, Bishop Samuel Ajayi Crowder, your regions here, James Johnson, Apostle Babalola, you name them, all through modern history. And then across the globe, you will talk about men and women who have been mightily used by God. A few people have written about them, we call them God's generals. Almost every territory has men and women who at one point or the other, they experience the power, the fire, the grace, and they moved in such dimensions that brought glory to the name of the Lord. Here's what the Bible says, that the things that are written aforetime, they are for our learning, so that we, through the comfort of Scripture, might find hope. But then the challenge with these moves of God is that strangely so, as powerful as they come, mighty miracles, the moves of God, bringing spiritual awakenings, bringing industrial revolutions. A point comes when it looks like the succession system is not mastered. And when those people either pass on to glory or by reason of age and the depletion of strength, the move goes down and you will look at some of those regions and never believe that God wants to move. If we only have the monuments to convince us, not the impact again, but the monuments. There are places across the globe today, across the Middle East, some of those places were the places where this scripture was written. And yet you go there today and you don't find anything that looks like God. If you are fortunate, you will meet great stones. You will meet ancient inscriptions that may archaeologically convince you that an event like this happened. And if we do not learn what I'm about to teach tonight, may God forbid that Christ tarries. And then a time comes when we come to this island and cannot find anything God. May God forbid it that once upon a time or a time to come, we will pass through this island and see that there's no reason. Awakening God consciousness is empty. Someone shall know it. Are we together? Many moves of God have come and have gone from the Wells Revival, the Azusa Street Revival, the Healing Revival, the Charismatic Revival. They brought with them several dimensions of God. But for some reason, it seems like the potency of these revivals become lost because the system of preservation has not been studied. We have learned how to start revivals, but we have not learned how to sustain the impact. This is my assignment tonight, to show us a mystery that can leave revivals and cause their impact to be transgenerational. If you're with me, please say amen. amen. Two scriptures. Judges chapter two. We're going to start our reading tonight with a very disturbing and very troubling rendition. Judges chapter 2 from verse 10. Judges chapter 2 from verse 10. Okay, we have it projected. Now pay attention please. I'm reading to 19. And also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers. And there arose, listen carefully, another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. Next verse. 
And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Bali. We're reading to 19. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt and followed other gods of the gods of the people that were round about them and bowed themselves up to them and to force the Lord to anger. Was still reading. And they forsook Sabel and Ashrod. These were ancient gods. And the anger of the Lord was fought against Israel. And he delivered them into the hands of spoilers that spoiled them. And he sold them into the hand of their enemies round about, so that they could not any longer stand before their enemies. We're reading to 19. Whithsoever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for evil, as the Lord had said, and as the Lord had sworn unto them, and they were greatly distressed. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges, hallelujah, which delivered them out of the land of those that spoiled them. And yet they would not hearken unto their judges. But they went, what's the word there? Worrying after other gods and bowed themselves unto them and turned quickly out of the way which their fathers wanted. Take note, which their fathers wanted. Obeying the commandments of the Lord, but they did not do so. 18. And when the Lord raised them up, judges, then the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For it repented the Lord because of their groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. The last scripture, 19. The Bible says, and it came to pass when the judge was dead. What happened? They returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers in following other gods to serve them and to bow down to them. And they ceased not from their own doings, nor from their own stubborn way. This is a very tragic rendition. That once upon a time, the nation of Israel saw the outstretched arm of God. They had mighty visitations from the Lord. But then they went back into their ways of depravity and God gave them to the hands of their enemies and they cried. And in his mercy, he raised judges for them. And whilst these judges were alive, they guided them in the way of the Lord. But notice there was one mistake with this scripture. All the judges and all the people had no succession system. So when those who were custodians of what God was doing, the moment they the people re their depravity, etc. The Bible clearly tells us in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10 that we have been made unto our God a kingdom of priests and we shall reign. It is his desire that we reign in life serving the purposes of God and see to it that Christ is enthroned and Christ is glorified. Now, there are two things I want to teach you before we get into the discourse tonight. Please look up. The gospel has two sides. There are two sides to the gospel. The first side to the gospel is the message that saves. There is the gospel as the message that saves an individual. The message that saves. What is that? A revelation of the love of the Father revealed in the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Man being the object of that sacrifice alongside creation to the end that whosoever believes in that sacrifice, there is a reward for believing that sacrifice. It's actually the gift of God. It's called the life of God. Eternal life, we call it. Are we together? So the message that reveals the love the sacrifice of Jesus 
man being the object of that sacrifice alongside creation our assignment is to believe that report and we receive eternal life to our spirit but the second side of the message or the gospel is an ideology that enthrones Christ across a territory and across society. There is a dimension of the gospel that is not just for an individual edification. A dimension of the gospel that should affect society, should affect territories. That means not only an individual should be saved, territories as a whole should come under the influence of the government of the Christ. For a very long time, and for many years, we did very well in the first area. We helped people through evangelism to receive this gift of God, but we neglected our territories. And so we had individuals who loved Jesus, but the territory became harsh and hostile to these individuals because we did not sustain the intelligence to bring our territories under the corporate influence of the government of the Christ. The result, many of those people became discouraged, some of them became backslidden Christians, and then when those who were the captives that spearheaded the move of God, now departed to be with the Lord, the influence of the territory became so strong that the personal convictions of the people dwindled. you. So you find pockets of Christians across a territory and yet that territory does not name the name of the Lord. Are we blessed? The message says individuals, then an ideology that transforms territories. I commented on this yesterday, I'd like to repeat myself again. When I came into your territory from the NLNG and then all to other territories, I was amazed level of dexterity and culture and order and civility that surrounds your territory. Are we together? There seems to be a modus operandi that brings a sense of responsibility and order. I commend and I confess that you people are a very orderly and a very disciplined people, corporately. It's quite unusual, especially because Africa as a territory, we seem to not be compliant. How you people got to this state is worthy of commendation. But there is a sense of dexterity, obedience. I saw cars waiting for cars. I saw cars waiting for pedestrians. And it was as though you are not in this nation. Now, the reason is because there is a modus operandi. Are we together now? The territory came under the influence of a modus operandi. And for as long as you subscribe to it, it produced an ideology that is now benefiting all and sundry. Are we together? This is how the gospel is. There is a mind control system that the gospel should carry that should make everyone within that territory and then the territory itself to come to the obedience of Christ. If you're still with me, say amen. amen. Second scripture, 1 Kings 18, 21. 1 Kings 18, 21. Elijah came unto the people. Elijah was tired and fed up of their dilly-dally. And he came up to the people and said, How long hold ye between two opinions? He said, If the Lord be God, follow him. And if Baal, then follow him. The Bible says, And the people answered him not a word. When you read all the scriptures, he called for a contest at Mount Carmel, where the prophets of Baal were given an opportunity from morning till night to call upon the name of their Lord, if peradventure he would answer. And they called and caught themselves, lacerations everywhere, and yet he would not answer. And the Bible says, when it was a time for the evening sacrifice, Elijah having put the sacrifice upon the altar set of 12 stones, he called upon the God of heaven, and he came down answering by fire, licked up the water. And that day, the God of the Bible, the God of the Hebrews, enthroned himself again as Lord of God. Hallelujah. 
There are a few principles, six of them, very quickly, I may not be teaching, I'll just mention them and say a word on them because I'm hoping and praying that one day, some young man, some young woman will stumble across this message when they are studying what is the prophetic blueprint of God for Bonnie Island. And that by the Spirit, they will come across this message and listen to it and say, oh, this is a key and a road map to what God intends to do and how revivals will be transformed. There are six keys that I've learned from my life, from the privilege of our common mentorship, the opportunity to have studied revivals. I'm a student of revivals. I've had the honor and the privilege of meeting a few people in their lifetime who were mightily used by God across the earth and have studied the references and the books of many. I've studied the revival in Nigeria. I've had the honor and the privilege of listening to people who were mightily used by God or knew others who were used by God in close proximity. And like a spiritual archaeologist, I have been able to piece together six keys that I believe any territory and any individual that works in compliance with these keys, you will always preserve the move of God within that territory. I pray that the Lord will open our eyes and grant us understanding. Amen. Are you ready? Key number one. You want to preserve the move of God territorially across Boni Island and across your region. The first key is prayer. Key number one is prayer. The priesthood ministry of prayer. You will never be able to preserve the move of God in a territory when there is a shortage of men and women who understand the mystery of warfare and intercession in prayer. When I talk of prayer, the kind of prayer that brings revival in a territory is not just prayer for petition and request. There is a dimension of prayer that is responsible, listen carefully, for awakening. It is the dimension of prayer called prophetic intercession and warfare. There must be people always from different churches across different places here within this region. There must be an emergence of men and women who understand the art of holding up to the four horns of the altar. Men and women who know how to lift up the incense of prayer so that the purposes of God will continue and will advance in your region. Ezekiel chapter 22. Ezekiel chapter 22. We'll begin our reading from verse 23. Ezekiel chapter 22 from verse 23. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, We're reading to 30. Son of man, say unto her, Thou art the land that is not cleansed, nor rain upon it the day of indignation. 25. There is a conspiracy of our prophecies in the midst thereof, like the roaring lion ravening the prey. They have devoured souls. They have taken the treasure and precious things. They have made how many widows in the midst thereof. Uh -huh. Her priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things. They have not put difference between holy and profane. Neither have they shown difference between unclean and the clean. And have hid their eyes from my servants and I am profane among them. Please continue. Go ahead. Her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves ravening the prey to shed blood and to destroy souls to get this honest gain. 28. And her prophets have dubbed them with untempered mortar See vanity and divining lies unto them saying, Thus saith the Lord when the Lord has not spoken. 29. The people of the land have used oppression 
and exercise robbery. They have vexed the poor and the needy. Yea, they have oppressed the wrongfully. Thirty will add thirty-one also. And I sought for them among them that should hedge to make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. But I found none. Next verse. Therefore, because I did not find prophetic intercessors in the land, I have poured out my indignation upon them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own way have I recompensed upon their heads, saith the Lord God. Destruction becomes imminent for any territory when there are no prophetic intercessors. Men and women who understand the art of prayer Warfare in the spirit and intercession that the purposes of God be advanced. He says, right from the days of John the Baptist and even until now, the kingdom of God suffered violence, and the violence shall take it by force. Jeremiah 29 and verse 7. Please pay attention. The first key to preserve. The awakening of the spirit upon this territory for your children and your children's children is the priesthood ministry of prayer, intercession, warfare. And seek the peace of the city whither I have caused you to be carried away captive and pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. When a territory is troubled, the trouble will eventually affect you. That was what Mordecai told Esther. He said, do not in the palace. And because things are glorious in the palace, Haman is plotting to kill us. When he is done with that territory, he will discover you are a Jew. And he will come for you. There needs to be a reimagining of prayer groups prayer chains, men and women raised by God who know how to pray. The, the price for revival is genuine prayer with fasting, not just people who are saying, Lord, give me tea, give me prayer. He wants to bless you, no doubt. But men who can pray, like John Knox who would pray over Scotland, oh God, give me Scotland or I die. Oh God, give me Scotland, or I die. There must be men and women who are selfless. It's not just the issue of I am president of a group, nameless, faceless people. And I tell you by prophecy, God will begin to raise men you see from among you. Some of them are ordinary people, no name, ordinary mothers. Every evening you will stand behind a tree, shake it ever, ta, ta, ta. Lord, preserve your work in Pony Island. This is why God brought some of you here. Confirm to you that what you are doing is not in the flesh. There are mothers that will arise. Even in old age, grace will be given to you like Anna the prophetess. And you will stand in prayer. Night and day. Lord, let evil not prevail over the territory. And every time the hand of Satan wants to come, there is a mother, there is a father, there is a young man and woman praying and say, no way! We are the gatekeepers of this territory and we do the spiritual communication. Evil cannot try when we are Listen very carefully. There is a price for the move of God. The price of genuine prayer. When men do not pray, evil thrives in the territory. When men do not pray, Occultism thrives in the territory. When men do not pray, injustice thrives. Do you know why? The Bible says the heaven of heavens belongs to the Lord, but the earth he has given to the sons of men. So if anything is going wrong in our territory, it's a, ter it's a testament of our mismanagement. No matter how technologically advanced we are, please hear me, there are forces assigned over territories. To thwart the purposes of God. There are familiar spirits that grow with many and master the patterns they create.
create behavioral patterns that sabotage the destinies of people. So you find a territory with widespread irresponsibility. You find a territory where the men are irresponsible and it's the women that serve the men. You find a territory where the young people are not respectful. You find a territory with a widespread manifestation of misbehavior and all kinds of things. There are spirits. There must be men and women who must learn how to command power from the realm of the spirits. If you want to see God move in Bonnie Island, follow the path of the great patriarchs. Bishop Samuel Ajayi Crowder, James Johnson. These people did not start with preaching. They started with prayer. I had the opportunity to see their pulpits. I had the opportunity to see how they called upon the God of heaven. And even at the threat of their lives, like the three Hebrew boys, they refused to bow to the forces of the land. They commanded some of your kings by the reason of the power they commanded in the heavens. They led some of your kings to accept Jesus openly. Today you are benefactors of that prayer. I pray for you. Whatever has killed your prayer life, whatever has brought you down to a point of spiritual coldness, may that fire be found after tonight. The move of God will always suffer when people do not pray. When it's time for prayer meetings, carry your children. Don't say they are too young. You will not be here forever. Respectfully speaking, this is a mistake that the West made in the 60s and 70s. When the move of God was so strong, many of the parents were in that revival, but they forgot their children. Remember what Pharaoh told Egypt. He said, we'll let you go, but leave your children behind. They said, no way. We are all going. Anything that makes you to neglect your children in carrying them along, one generation of neglect will return Satan back to eternity. Please listen to me tonight. This is a prophetic message to the body of Christ. One generation of neglect, 30 days without prayer, was all that the parliament in Babylon needed. 30 days without prayer and the house of assembly sat down to pass a decree. All Satan needs is that short a time and he will wreak havoc over a territory. Men and women who know how to pray. Once it is night, you wake up with a sense of responsibility.
Listen. I challenge every family here. As a father, as a mother, let your children know prayer by watching you pray. Not by learning it in Sunday school. Let them learn prayer from you. That whilst they are sleeping in the middle of the night, they hear that taking away the cloak of CEO, taking away the cloak of a professional. Wear your priestly regalia. Walk from room to room. Lay hands on the children. Continuity of spirituality. 
Many of you remember this is how we were raised to night prayers or morning prayers or both. A time when they shed the truth. Now you have children reproduce that same result. Don't just give them secular education alone. You must connect them to the God that lifted you to this level. They should not know book alone. They must know God in the beginning. God. We live in a world today where when a child is educated, master's PhD, no matter how deprived he is spiritually, we say it's alright. It's just that he doesn't know God, but he's a very serious person. What is our young speak of seriousness? In one day, the powers of darkness can sweep that destiny. And every level of 10, 20 years can be over. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Are we together now? They continuing daily with one accord in the temple and in breaking of bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. As a result, 47, watch this. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church. How long? Because they met daily, he added daily. If they meet yearly, he will add yearly. He will meet you at the frequency of your seriousness.
And we pray and fast and you say, no, 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 I don't know what this means. Let's go to church and say, why? Today is Tuesday. You see that kind of thing. The disparity in quality of believers we are raising is traceable to the error in the manual that we are using. There is something wrong with the body of the curriculum that we are using to raise believers. We may not all stand doctrinally speaking. There might be differences here and there according to different levels of revelation for different reasons. But there are foundational pillars. If you don't believe that one, you are not a Christian. We may differ here and there, but the margin of error should not be so wide. The foundational pillars, if taught correctly, Hebrews chapter 6 tells us there are foundations. Please give it to us. Hebrews 6 verse 1. Is God speaking to us tonight? Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance of dead works and of faith towards God, verse 2, of the doctrine of baptisms, of laying on of hands, of the resurrection of the dead, of eternal judgment. There are things every Christian must believe to be a Christian. If you do not believe that one, you are not a Christian. If you do not believe Jesus is God, He came manifest in the flesh, came as a propitiation, a substitutionary sacrifice. Redeeming men through his blood, his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension, his enthronement. If you do not believe in the ministry of the Holy Spirit, if you do not believe in the virgin birth, if you do not believe in the power of the world and the power of the Holy Spirit to transform and guide believers as they sojourn, if you do not believe in God's agenda, global missions, of winning the world, if you do not believe in influence, the strategy that enthrones Christ across his, his, the his strata, if you do not believe in all of these things, then you do not believe he is coming back. You are not a Christian. It's as simple as that. The cure for this disparity of errors is to have a methodical template Maybe not the same. Right now there are vaccines for COVID-19 by different companies. But principally, I believe that the pharmacology of those vaccines are similar. Otherwise, they would not be allowed to administer because if you give me an option to take this one or that one, it means that the pharmacology is not so different as far as how it will work in my body. I should be able to attend any church within Pony and know that my Sunday service will not be a waste. I should be able to attend any service and know that in that service there will be prayer, that there will be worship, that there will be giving, that there will be the word, that the word will be targeted at winning souls, transforming believers and empowering people. Regardless what someone, it must contain these things. Provision for sinners to be saved, a provision for believers to be transformed, and a provision for believers to be empowered. The greatest need of an unbeliever is salvation. The greatest need of a believer is transformation. The greatest need of a transformed believer is empowerment. This must be captured upon our pulpit, regardless the church, regardless the assembly. Are we together? Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Basca Nakata Branda Katekato Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and make a The face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.